The Gobi Desert eats 1,400 square miles of grassland annually, displacing thousands of people and threatening the economy. Known as the Yellow Dragon, the Gobi Desert is the sixth largest desert in the world, covering almost 27% of northern China. Shared between China and southern Mongolia, it is the fastest growing desert, alarming the China authorities to take some kind of action. Known locally as the Yellow Dragon, its expansion has led to many people becoming climate refugees. Beijing fighting decertification. Over the years, various ecological projects have been revealed in China aimed at reversing desertification and protecting the existing grasslands. Today, we'll discuss the largest restoration taken up by the Chinese government, befittingly named the Great Green Wall. Otherwise known as the Three North Shelter Belt Program, TNSP, it covers 13 provinces across northern China with a total area of 1.5 million square miles. This ambitious 72-year-old plan was launched way back in 1978 and is expected to be completed by 2050. One of the project's goals is to increase forest coverage from 5% to 15% in northwest, north, and northeast China. This project spans up to 2,800 miles by 930 miles. The Green Wall Project is expected to increase the world's forest by 10%. The program oversees the planting of various grasses, shrubs, and trees in a systematic pattern that ensures mutual protection and high survival rates. A combination of manual planning and aerial afforestation methods was employed. So far, an impressive figure of 66 billion trees have been planted, creating the largest artificial forest in the world. But to tame the Gobi Desert is no easy feat. After all, the desert covers an area equivalent to 888,000 square miles. Due to its scale, the desert is known to affect regional and global climate and is in turn affected by global climate change. The subsequent climate change makes the Gobi Desert one of the most complex ecosystems to understand and manage. Can the Great Green Wall be successful in halting the Yellow Dragon? And what strategies are being used on the ground to make this change? Handling the huge desert may not be easy, but do you know what is? Pressing the subscribe button. This simple action will deliver two brand new videos each week to your timeline. So go on and subscribe to Visionary Builds to bring you the latest news and mega projects around the world. To understand the present issue situation, we must dig into the past. The problem has its roots almost half a century ago, starting in 1958. Back then, the Republic government undertook a major urbanization program. This required both space and material in the form of timber. Chairman Mao ordered entire forests and wildlands to be raised to provide timber and space for accommodating the growing population. Such human activity left much of the land unprotected against wind erosion and deposition from the surrounding deserts. However, urbanization and climate change aren't the only culprits here. As most of the desert inhabitants herd animals, the overgrazing of fertile land is another driving factor for desertification. Strong winds also blow off millions of fertile soil particles, making the top layer unproductive. Consequently, the topsoil slowly becomes devoid of organic matter and often areas with high salt content are formed. The expanding desert invites other problems like vicious sandstorms. Each year, dust storms blow off as much as 800 square miles of topsoil, and the storms are increasing in severity each year. These storms also have serious agricultural effects on other nearby countries such as Japan, North Korea, and South Korea. The widespread dust storms are known to cause serious economic impacts in these regions. There are now dunes forming just 44 miles from Beijing, and some estimates show the Gobi Desert crawls two miles per year towards the capital city. While planting trees might seem a natural move, the cruel weather conditions don't let them thrive. The trees that were planted as part of the afforestation efforts were non-native and thirsty. As a result, they absorbed the already dwindling supply of groundwater. This creates a vicious cycle where new trees are planted and then they absorb water and perish along with the other plants. According to a study of the Great Green Wall in 2004 by Su Yang, only 15% of the trees planted since 1978 have survived. According to Jennifer Turner, director of the China Environment Forum, with the Great Green Wall, people are planting lots of trees in big ceremonies to stem decertification, but then later no one takes care of them and they die. Furthermore, monoculture planting in the area has made forested areas more vulnerable to disease. For those who don't know, monoculture planting means growing only one specific crop at a time within a particular area. Sticking to a single species might be beneficial in some cases, but they are often highly susceptible to pathogens. Monoculture planting does little to regenerate nutrients in the soil and fails to create the diverse ecosystems needed for lush vegetation. In 2000, 
one billion poplar trees in China's northwest Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region, representing two decades of work, were lost to a single disease. But not everything's that grim, and there are some positive outcomes of the Green Wall. Estimates show that forest areas in northern China went from 5% in 1978 to 13.5% in 2017. China permanently treated nearly 20% of the desert land, restoring nearly 100,000 square kilometers of grassland severely affected by desertification and salinization. Fuel wood was produced with an annual output of 5.47 million tons by the introduction of innovative forestry management techniques. Soil erosion was halted in 40% of the area, rainfall was increased, and there was a visible reduction in the rate of expansion of the Gobi Desert. 82,200 square miles of farmland was protected from wind erosion and related impacts. This success was possible by the constant tracking of the progress by the government and individual effort by the local community. But perhaps it was already too late for the native population living in the deserts. Between 2003 and 2008, 650,000 people living in China's Inner Mongolia province were forcibly resettled into 161 hastily built villages. One such example is the inhabitants of the Tegar Desert on the south edge of Gobi Desert, not far from major cities like Beijing. The Tegar's growing. As it expands, it's merging with two other deserts to form a vast sea of sand that could become uninhabitable. This placed an enormous strain on the local population, 30,000 of whom were relocated to a village about 9.6 kilometers from Swan Lake. Residents who live on the edge of the deserts try to limit the steady march of the sand. Along with local governments, they plant hundreds of trees to block the wind and stabilize the soil. Officials also offer subsidies to farmers to help them reclaim land for agriculture. But as the soil becomes hard and uncultivable, farmers often have to use fertilizer and dig deep to be able to grow crops. Miao Miao Lake Village is another example of a village made for hosting ecological migrants. Thousands of people were resettled here from Ningxiai Hui, which mostly consists of desert. Studies show that the land could no longer provide for a population of 2.3 million as of 2014. Rainfall was rare, the average temperature has risen by 2.1 degrees Celsius in the last 50 years. The villagers had cut down many trees for firewood and to build homes, he said. And the government never built enough reservoirs. The natives had no other choice but to leave their animals in extensive farmlands. In the new town of Miao Miao, a total of 1,400 homes were built to host the 7,000 population. The size of each family's plot is about 150 square meters, or 1,600 square feet, with the house taking up a third of that. Many complain about the cramped quarters in the farmland allotted to each person, far less than they had in their home villages. As part of the resettlement process, each household had to pay $2,100 resettlement fee and was promised a plot of land to farm as the families left behind plentiful fields and animals. But those who received plots ended up having to lease them to an agricultural company and were left with tiny front yards, where they grew small plants. The resettlement of Ningxia's population occurred in five phases starting in 1983. Initially, migrants were given land in the north and told to move and build new homes on their own. These days, the government builds them homes, albeit small ones out of the $3 billion spent on the five ways of relocation. The problem of climate refugees is not unique to China itself, but to the world at large. Throughout the past 40 years, the Earth has lost a third of its arable land to erosion and degradation. The Institute for Economics and Peace predicts that in the worst-case scenario, 1.2 billion people could be displaced by 2050 due to natural disasters and other ecological threats. Despite steps in the right direction, national and international responses to this challenge remain limited, and protection for those affected is inadequate. Desertification alone affects 3.2 billion people worldwide, making it a major environmental challenge. However, despite the gravity of the situation, several successful examples of desertification reversed. One such example is the restoration project in Africa with the same name. Known as the Great Green Wall of Africa, the initiative was launched in 2007 and seeks to plant a wall of trees spanning over 8,000 kilometers from west to east of the African continent. More than 77 square miles of trees have been planted so far in Senegal, and overall, more than 700 square miles of land have been restored. The next example is from China itself. Loess Plateau in China was once a barren wasteland. However, through a mixture of government policies and community participation, the area has been transformed into a thriving ecosystem. The restoration process involved the terracing of hillsides, the construction of cheek dams, and the planting of trees and grasses. This step not only halted desertification, but also enhanced the agricultural capacity and the living conditions of the people. Battling environmental changes might require a Herculean effort on the part of both institutions and people, but it is essential for securing a green future for the upcoming generations. That's all for today, so if you liked today's video, hit the like and subscribe button. We are committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. We'll see you in the next video.